Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. I get many questions about what computer to get for data science. In this video, I talk about the different computer hardware components as they relate to data science. At the end, I give you my thoughts on the best computer for the field, whether that's a desktop, a laptop, or something else altogether. As I previously mentioned, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is about what is the best computer for data science or for a beginner. I wanted to make a video that gives my complete thoughts on the topic. First, I want to say that I'm not a real hardware person, I just know enough to be dangerous. I've done a few PC builds and I may or may not have a video on one coming up in the next few months. Please take my hardware knowledge with a grain of salt, that's all I kind of wanted to get out of the way first. Let's start with the CPU here. This is important for doing most of the basic processing functions for data science. In 2020, better processors usually have more cores. This allows more efficient parallel processing. Most data science packages are run using hardware from the CPU resources. Generally, you can get by with a very basic processor, but having a powerful multi-threaded CPU can potentially speed up your workflow. For a desktop build, I personally use the AMD Ryzen processors. I think the Ryzen 5, 7, and 9 are the most practical for a data science build. There's nothing wrong with the Intel processors, I just personally prefer AMD. I think they're cheaper and you get just as good a product. Next comes the RAM, which stands for Random Access Memory. In simplest terms, the amount of RAM that you have dictates how much data you can process at one time. In this sense, more RAM equals larger batches and quicker processing. Following that, still memory is the hard drive. This is likely where your data will be stored. I generally don't think that you have to go crazy here. There are plenty of cloud storage providers that are very cheap. You can just download your data locally for a short period of time if needed. I think 256 gigabytes of hard drive memory is plenty. This type of memory is relatively cheap, so if you want to scale up, feel free to, it won't cost you that much. I recommend going with an SSD, which stands for a steady state drive. This is far quicker for data retrieval. It isn't as fast as RAM by a long shot, but it can be an order of magnitude faster than the traditional HHD disk drive. Finally, the graphics card can also be extremely important for deep learning tasks. I think a GPU with around 6 gigabytes of memory will meet most needs, but if you're working on huge data sets, editing videos, or playing graphics intensive games, you might want to invest in a more expensive graphics card here. I recently received this one from NVIDIA, and I'm extremely excited to experiment with it. More potential videos to come on that in the future. Now for my final computer recommendation. With all this being said, the computer that you have or one that you can afford is the best computer for data science. With the advancements in cloud computing, most data science isn't actually done on your local machine anymore. You have access to top of the line GPUs like this one for free or for extremely cheap on these online platforms. Google Colab and Kaggle allow you to access CPU and GPU, even TPU compute power through your browsers. One thing I didn't actually talk about was internet connectivity. That may actually be the most important feature of a computer for starting data science. If you still wanna do things locally, you have additional GPU options. There's an upcoming trend of eGPUs that allow you to connect powerful graphics cards to your laptop via USB-C. This allows you to potentially connect very powerful NVIDIA graphics cards to your laptop and leverage their power. There are also tools like Intel's Neural Compute Stick that offer similar portable compute power for neural nets and computer vision. These are still relatively new and you have to make sure that you have the proper requirements and configurations on your computer to make them work. So definitely do your homework before exploring these options. So for beginners, I wouldn't worry that much about the hardware. You can do literally anything you need to do on a computer that is under $500. Still, there are use cases for a more advanced computer, and if you're trying to build one or are certain that you want to be working locally, I recommend the following specs. For a CPU, you generally want to have at least four cores. Again, I think the AMD Ryzen 5 through 9 lines are perfectly fine for a data science PC. For RAM, you generally want to have at the very, very minimum eight gigabytes, you probably wanna start around 16 gigabytes and go any you know go as high as you want there. For hard drive, I'd mentioned that 256 gigabytes is enough. If you want, again, this memory is not that expensive, so you can ramp up to even like a terabyte. I believe this was around $150, which really isn't that bad. 
For a GPU, it really depends on your use case. If you're doing a lot of video editing or, you're, or playing high performance games, you might want to invest a little bit more here. If you're only using it for deep learning, uh, the, frankly, the online compute resources can be just as cost effective. I think that almost any computer that has these specs will suffice. I've personally been using a Dell XPS 15 inch model for the past few years as my laptop, and I've built my own computer for a desktop. The desktop has quite a lot of upgrades because I use it for video editing as well as data science. I've linked all the parts for my personal PC, my laptop, and the computer that I'm building in the description below. Definitely those are really top of the line requirements. They're not something you need to get started. So I've also included a kind of mid-tier level data science computer and a, a cheaper tier data science computer that can be built for you know less than $1,000. I'm actually in the process of building an absolute beast of a computer for data science, so stay tuned for the video on that in the future. I hope that this video helped you to understand more about the hardware requirements of data science and also about the power of cloud computing. Thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.